Tyler, welcome to Halloween Daily. Thank you so much for hanging out and talking to us today. Yeah, man. Thanks for having me. It's about time. I know. I know. It's It's been a long time coming, I think. I know we've talked about it a few times, and um, I am excited. It definitely feels like a long time coming for me, um, and it, but it's perfect timing in a way, because as we're recording this, I mean, it's just a few weeks away from the big Halloween franchise event out in Pasadena, and I know you're going to be there, we're going to be there, it's, you know, it's going to be an epic event, and we'll talk a little bit about that, and I know you've got an exciting new project that you're launching, kind of as we speak, and, and we're going to talk all about that, um, but if you'll indulge us for just a minute, we usually, whenever possible, try to start these interviews off with a little bit about the Halloween holiday itself, and just kind of what that means to you, and um, I know you grew up in, in Canada. I'm, I'm curious, growing up, what was the Halloween scene like in your neighborhood? Oh, man. It was get yourself the biggest pillowcase you can find and dress as warm as you can because you know it's going to be cold and snowing, probably, yeah. and just hit as many houses as you could, you know, which was kind of good because I used to be a paper boy back then. I started, like, paper up when I was about 9 or 10, so mm -hmm. everybody knew me. So they'd give me extra candy, you know? Uh -huh. So it was kind of, it was kind of pretty cool. But uh, yeah, that's what we used to do, you know, is just uh, did that, kept doing that until, uh, till I grew out of it. I grew out of it pretty quick, you know, being a tall, skinny kid, you know, <laughs> they thought an adult was coming to the door there. <laughs> I guess so. Yeah. Yeah. You can't, probably couldn't have gotten away with trick-or-treating too, too old. I mean, some of us could get away with it until we're driving probably, but I don't, I don't think you could have. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> They'd call bullshit pretty quick. <laughs> and and I know I know now as an adult and, and since you know working on a movie that's synonymous with the holiday, it probably has a whole new meaning for you now. But but do you and, and your wife and your family get into it these days? You know, we'll we we'll, we usually go to maybe some friend's house for a party or something like that yeah. and, and keep it pretty chill. Mm -hmm. People always ask me, Oh, do I dress up as Michael Myers on, <laughs> on Halloween? No, I do not. <laughs> well, I've, I've got another one. I, I wasn't going to ask that, although that's a, that's. A, I'm glad you answered it. But I was curious, how many times have you been answered the door and there's a little Michael Myers trick-or-treater at your door on Halloween? You know, we're, well, where we live, we don't get that many trick-or-treaters. That's like where uh -huh. we live, too, in our neighborhood. Like we, I think they might know to stay away from my house. <laughs> <laughs> word word might have gotten out you're right i didn't right. think about that but yeah they <laughs> that might be why you haven't seen too many that's true that would bring them but no it keeps them away <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah well i guess i guess that would make sense too you know if they heard that the, that's the real life house of michael myers the real myers house that, yeah that might uh put um keep some of them away i would imagine right. they just don't know that you, if, if you they know you got the best candy, though. That might change it, though. I don't know. You know, because every year we go out and buy boatloads of candy. We're prepared, but we, yeah. We buy the stuff that we like because we know that we're going to be eating it afterwards. Right. <laughs> That's like us. Yeah, yeah. We might get two or three on our street, you know, and then, yeah. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you got to buy the stuff you like. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Because you know definitely. you're going to have to clean up the leftovers for sure. <laughs> right. So, so what's your favorite? We always ask these two questions about Halloween. Your favorite Halloween candy and your favorite Halloween costume. Oh, favorite Halloween candy would have to be um, the little candy corns. I like those things. Yeah, Those, those are pretty cool. Mm -hmm. And I went as a... Um, Grown up Harry Potter one year with my wife and put she put the scar on my face and oh. it was kind of pretty funny but uh, <laughs> yeah yeah I I don't put too much thought into my costumes these days anymore I mean like if I put like three dots on my head I'd go as a bowling ball or something you know I don't know <laughs> who knows <laughs> I, the bowling ball one well, that's a good I, that's a good idea but, right, but yeah now I'm trying to picture you as adult harry potter that that i think would be a sight i'd like to see that'd be that'd be pretty yeah fun. i i think she's got some pictures somewhere i'll, I'll see if i can wrangle one up and shoot yeah. it off so you can put it in with this yeah that'd be awesome 
I love it. So before we get into like your career, you were a pro wrestler, and I've heard you talk on Q and A's before. You know, we've been at a, a couple cons in the past, and I've I've heard you talk about being a, a skinny kind of scrawny kid growing up, and but in the nineties. You're on WCW TV as a as a pro wrestler, and can you tell us a little bit about that that transformation and that journey that that put you there? Yeah, you know, I've been a tall, skinny kid, glasses, braces, slightly dyslexic in Canada. On the weekends, I'd watch Stampede Wrestling, so I'd watch the Hearts, the Heart Foundation, oh, yeah. and all of that, and then I would uh, start watching action films after that. And I always said, I'm going to do that someday. And everybody laugh and go, yeah, right, you know. And then I just started hitting the gym and uh, working out and putting some size on. And uh, went down to Stu Hart's uh, dungeon and uh, became a pro wrestler. So, wow. yeah. I started there with Stu. And then I went to uh, Los Angeles with Red Bastine. And he trained me. Finished training me with the Mondo Guerrero. Um, wow. And uh, then I went all over the world and transitioned into the film in 99 uh, when I did the X-Men movie. Was was Stu Hart's dungeon as like like how we hear those stories? Was it was it really like that in your experience? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, it was a, a dark, dingy, smelly place. Oh. And it had low ceilings. You know, and I'd say, well, Stu, how are we going to learn, you know, backdrops and things here? He goes, uh, kid, uh, you got a lot of time before you're going to learn that. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, man. So, and then he'd be like, hey, uh, come here, kid, let me show you this move. Uh, does it hurt? Uh, it's a double grapevine. And I'd be screaming, and I'm like, oh, my God. But yeah, it it was uh, it was a great experience. Man, man. So, um, so you, was it a, a natural transition? Was it something you were aiming for, or, or how did the transition happen in the film? Because, like you said, you you started with X Men, and I mean, I remember seeing that in the theater when it first came out, and and just really loving it and being blown away because there hadn't been a really cool comic book book movie like that really kind of since the Tim Burton. Batman's at that time, and it was like X Men came out and really, and I, I watched the um, animated series too, and it kind of you know brought all that to life. Um, but yeah. was that something you were actively pursuing, or did it just kind of did they did, were they looking for a uh, a wrestler to embody Saber King? Well, no, actually, you know, I they were talking to I was tagging with Kevin Nash for a little while there, and mm -hmm. they were talking to him uh, about okay. the part. But for some reason, it didn't work out, you know, and. Mm -hmm. uh, the uh, stunt coordinator showed Brian Singer my headshot, and he goes, oh, my God, that's Sab Sabertooth. So I went in and uh, to audition for it. I went and got fake teeth and everything and 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 went in for the audition, you know, guns and blazing to get that role, and, and it worked out good. But that was not, not the very first thing I did. That was just when I hung up my uh, boots for good. I got you. Um, when I was wrestling in Mexico, I did one of those uh, Mexican wrestling movies, those luchador movies, oh. where I played an intergalactic vampire that <laughs> shot laser beams through my fingertips and had three midget or short people that were running around with me as, as <laughs> aliens. So, yeah. Man, that's that, what that was my start in the film business. Wow. That well, that sounds like a hell of a start. I'm gonna have to seek that one out. <laughs> but but then you know th th what I realized is I'm not getting dropped on my head every day. Yeah. And they take better care of you. So I was like, all right. Yeah. I like it. Right? Yeah. I yeah, a li little bit easier than than uh yeah, Stu Hart's dungeon, and then like you said, traveling the world, you get to travel the world, but you're still getting dropped on your head every day. Um, that's the price you pay, I guess. So yeah, now you can uh, hang it up and, and you're wrestling I people, and you're wrestling people like Andre the Giant, you know. So it's like <laughs> I was one of the last people to wrestle Andre in wow. Japan in '93. That is amazing. Thank I didn't you. realize that that you were in the ring with Andre. Well, well yeah. tell us just a little bit about that. I mean, just oh man, 
Yeah, you. I mean, you can find some of the pictures on my Instagram. And, okay. And show us side by side, but I looked like a toothpick next to him, <laughs> yeah. and I was three hundred and forty-eight pounds at the time. Wow. So that tells you how big that man was, you oh. know. And it was later on in his career, and um, you know, he's he's like, "Boss, do you mind if I pin you?" I'm like, "Please do," you know. Yeah. It was an honor, you know, but. Uh, it, he was a little slow getting up. Mm -hmm. He came down hard and was slow getting up. It's like, oh, Andre, come on, get off of me. Just a minute, boss. Just a minute, boss. I'm like, oh, my God. Oh, man. Ah, just like you said, just the honor of being, having that memory of being stuck under Andre for, for a few extra seconds. I mean, just unbelievable. Yeah, yeah. And, and you know, the funny thing is, too, um, I was on shows with The Rock's dad 15 years before I did The Scorpion King with the with the <laughs> Wayne. And That's awesome. He came, he came walking out of Universal Studios. Rocky did. He goes, what's going here? He said, I'm getting ready to work with a kid, old man. And he goes, have you met him yet? I go, no. So then he took me in and introduced me to Dwayne the first time. And so that was that was really cool. Oh, that is really cool. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and that history and coming back around and everything and like working with those guys and then then coming yeah. back around all those years later, like a full circle moment for you, it, it sounds like. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. I was in at the right time, man. Yeah. Yeah, I think you were. I think you were. That yeah, that a lot of awesome uh, personalities and just talents at that time. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and and nowadays the business is getting so crazy, it's yeah. I'm surprised how how guys' bodies are able to take it. You know what I mean? Really? Yeah, yeah, no lie. I mean, it, I'm astonished whenever I watch it. Like, they, they can even just get up, much less keep doing it every single night. It's, yeah, It's right. unbelievable. Um, so, uh, you know, I was thinking about this. I remember seeing you as, as Sabretooth in X-Men and, and really, you know, enjoying that portrayal because, I mean, I don't even think you even have any lines, but, I mean, it's, it's so memorable and you're just such a presence like you want Sabretooth to be and and like when you when you swipe the uh off his desk um the tags I think it is and but um it, it kind of makes sense looking down the road that you know Rob would see you as the shape you know kind of somebody that could silently have this monumental presence that you kind of gotta gotta have if, if you're gonna step behind that mic or that mic that Michael mask and um uh so, and and you guys had had worked together just a little bit on the Devil's Rejects, right? Was that when you yeah. first met Rob? I guess it was. Yeah, I you know I uh, just auditioned. They okay. I didn't know that they were replacing uh, the Rufus. Mm -hmm. I thought I was uh, auditioning for um, DDP's role. Oh, okay. But, uh, they had other plans, and uh, I went in there for for four days of uh, filming, and I thought, okay, that's it, you know. And and it, I had a great time, got to meet a lot of cool people, and then uh, a little while later, I get a phone call, and it's Rob, and he says, hey, you know, I'm I'm making this movie, uh, and I wrote it with you in mind, and if you don't do it, I don't want to do it. So I'm like, all right, cool. What is it, you know? And then he explained how he was going to tell the backstory and make it more than a. a one-dimensional character, which I think is really cool because mm -hmm. it, it shows his backstory of how he became a product of his environment. Yeah. Absolutely. You know? Yeah. And and I was going to ask that if, if it was just a phone call like that, that, that Rob called you or if there was any audition or anything, but he he literally told you, if you don't do it, I'm, I'm going to walk away from it. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, it, it's funny because... Uh, <laughs> I remember hearing afterwards, he was, I think, on Jimmy Fallon or some one of those shows, and they said, oh, do you know who's going to play the character? And he goes, yeah, I do, but I don't want to say because then he'll ask for more money. <laughs> I'm like, damn. <laughs> oh, man. Ah. Yeah, he knew, he, knew, he knew all along. Yeah, yeah, he definitely had you pictured for his, his portrayal. And like you said, it was – very striking because none of the movies have ever spent that much time on the backstory and and I actually had uh, your co-star Dave on here um, not too long ago earlier this year and uh, so this is this is another full circle moment for us here at HDM but we had him on here and we talked 
about that, how it was like, you're seeing Michael, you know, behind the scenes and getting inside Michael's head. And that's really what I like about Rob's movies is it's much more about what's going on in Michael's head than any of the others, you know, where it's the others are about, you know, the, the victims or the survivors. And right. um, whereas his, he really wanted to, to dive in there and, and get inside his head. Yeah, and show you just the, the dark deepness of, of Michael Myers, which was cool. And and like you said, a product of, of his environment. Yeah. So, how, I mean, obviously you were familiar with the character. Did Were you like a fan of the original film? Did you, I mean, how familiar, what was your relationship with Michael Myers prior to you know, I, getting that role? I was semi-familiar with the character. I'd seen the movies in the past, mm -hmm. uh, but I got to admit it, it, it didn't compute completely until I went back and did my research. And I was like, oh man, I got some big shoes to fill. So, and, and then, you know, Rob and I were just talking and saying how we were going to do it. And, and uh, it, it, it turned out pretty good, pretty intense. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I love how it turned out. And of course, it made a ton of money at the box office, held the, the Labor Day box office record for like a decade, I think, if I'm not mistaken. 14 years. 14 yeah. Years. Oh, yeah. yeah, 14 years. And yeah, we just last year was the 15th anniversary of that remake. And um, and and this year, you know, 16 years of that, 45 years of this whole franchise. Um. And and you said when you went back and watched, you started realizing, all right, I've got some some big boots to fill. Let's we'll say. Um, but when did it really hit you? Was it after the film came out, or, or at what point did it really hit you that you were part of this kind of elite fraternity of of guys that have worn that mask on screen and this massive legacy with this massive fandom? Yeah, you know, I mean, like I I was I realized it was pretty big and it had a big fan following but when i was at the uh age 40 yeah i was like you know we were taking these pictures with everybody and i was like you know who's that guy he goes oh he was a michael myers and so and so or, you know and i'm like how do i not know this there were so many people in that picture i was like and it was just people that were related to the character you know that yep and uh at that point, I realized just how how big it was. Yeah, yeah, and I I, I remember seeing that that photo you're talking about of that epic gathering, and, and yeah. I, I'm sure it'll be done again at at, at the 45th. Um, and and of course, you, you guys came back together. You did the sequel. I mean, was that just an easy decision when when Rob called again? You were just like, hell yeah, well, I'm in. Or or did he have to convince you of? Oh. No, no, I I was signed to a, a, a three picture deal actually. Oh, okay. And um, we ended up doing two of the three, and the third one was put on the shelf because Rob wasn't going to do it, you know. But uh, yeah. Gout and I were going to do it back in the day, and and they were going to green light it and everything, and but they didn't know who was going to direct it or where the script was coming from or anything like that. So I got gotcha. you. Uh, you know, and I'm kind of glad they did because it wouldn't have. I don't know that it would have had the same weight that Rob's did, yeah. you know, which is very important. You, you mean if another director, another creative team another came director, in? And, yeah, yeah, someone else would have come in and, right. and try to, you know, take those reins, so to yeah. speak. Yeah, I know what you mean. And, and I remember when they first announced the 2018 film, and you, I think, might have been the first person from this you know, from previous films that, that weren't necessarily involved in the new ones that I remember you on social media, you were like, hey, this this is great. I think it was right when they announced that Nick and James were, were gonna be doing their thing as as the new Michael. And you were like, This is this yeah. is awesome. I'm I'm thrilled to have had my time and and thrilled to, you know, pass it on. And and I remember seeing that at the time thinking, you yeah, know, that's that's pretty classy and cool, you know, that you know, just just um, wishing the next iteration of this character well. Because as we all always say, I mean, Michael's so big, he's going to be reinvented long after we're all gone, I think. So many times, yeah. 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 And, uh, you know, with playing him twice, I was like, okay, 
every time I want to do something, uh, kick up the 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 volume, you know. Yeah. So if we would have done a third one, I wouldn't know what we would have had to do to to make that kind of an impact. Because from one to two, it's two is way more aggressive than the first ones yeah. and that, and you know, because I just don't want to be. I didn't want to be just doing the same thing every film because it just right. it just doesn't make sense to me. It's like, what's the purpose of that? Yeah. And um and and I know you and, and Scout have remained tight and, and whenever I see you guys or, or pictures of you guys on your social media out at conventions together, you're always having fun, goofing off and have yeah. remained friends almost like a family, which is cool for us as fans to see. Yeah, yeah. She's a sweetheart. We are pretty much uh you know, pretty much like family. And and I, it's the way it is with all the characters, you know, the, yeah. Danielle and, and yep. Christine and, and all of them. You're like when when we run into each other, it's just like, hey, how is like no time has passed practically. So it's it's really cool. It's really cool. What would you say has been like your most surprising thing about this this 16 year journey from from getting that role and doing that rewatch of those films and kind of realizing and then and then now here we are looking at you know the big 45th anniversary of the whole franchise and everything what what's been like is there one overriding thing that surprised you the most just you know just how big the fan following is you know which is fantastic because like without you guys the fans we wouldn't have a job so thank you so much Awesome. Well, we're, we, I love what you did in the role, and I know uh, tons of our readers and viewers do as well. So um, um, now with 45 years coming up, you're doing something really cool there, and it's going to be raising money for a great cause, and you've been doing it at some other conventions. And, and I want to hear about that, but maybe you want to tell us a little bit about what your new project is first, because that, that ties in with with this great charity that, that you're working to raise money for now. So maybe you could tell us a little bit about your, your latest project. Yeah, sure. I, you know, I've got my own production company, Main Entertainment, mm -hmm. and uh, we're doing a graphic novel. So imagine Sons of Anarchy meets True Detective with a human trafficking theme. So what I've been doing since we did our research for this graphic novel, I've decided that I have to do something to give back to the, to the community and to, to people. I'm teaming with deliverfund.org and trafficking in America task force.org to help them raise awareness and get their message out. Um, but we are doing a Kickstarter that goes live October 17th for this graphic novel. It is written by Christopher Priest, who wrote the Black Panther, Punisher, Vampirella. I think he's written some Captain Americas. I mean, he is the man. And then we've got art by Will Conrad, Jimbo Salgado, Michael Montnot. Um, and then we have very uh, various different artists doing various covers. And they are top, top tier artists. And I'm so excited. And I can't wait to bring it all to you people. It, it sounds really cool. And, and, um, and it's called The Last Spartan. It is called The Last Spartan Red Tape. Red Tape, okay. I have a flyer here. I will send you this flyer so you can awesome. put it up uh, with it. Yep. And Very cool. uh, people can check it out. And I appreciate everybody's support. It, because it is, you know, dealing with a very, very serious uh, cause of, of human trafficking. And... Um, you know, it's been going around, going on since the beginning of time, but it's getting worse and worse now. You know, and, and some facts is 80% of the trafficking victims are Americans being trafficked by Americans. You know, people, a lot of people think it's, you know, people coming across the border or it's a border problem. It's not. It's mm -hmm. going on right here in our own backyard. And it's something that we need to put a stop to, you know. Um, and... That's why I reached out to Trick or Treat Studios and, and to see if we could do some things. And what we're doing to raise funds and raise awareness for it is this is the only time I'm doing in costume appearances because Trick or Treat Studio masks were released this year or are being released this year. And they were gracious enough to donate them to me. There's a bad boy right there. 
Very nice. And it, it's a set of three masks, the three different masks that they have. Okay. Uh, I'll be wearing the, the first one at the at the fo- uh, at the photo ops, but then there's these other ones, the various mm-hmm. different masks in various different stages. So what I decided to do is anybody that has a photo op, there's going to be a drawing. And one lucky winner is going to win all three of those masks, plus the cosplay jumpsuit that Teddy Cosplay made for me that is matching the Halloween jumpsuits. They will win that whole bundle for supporting, and a portion of the proceeds are going directly to deliverfund.org from the H45. Awesome. And then from the Spookala, we will be donating to traffickinginamericataskforce.org. And that's the last time I will be wearing these costumes for photo ops ever. So there you have it. So if you guys are in the area of the Halloween 45 or Spookala this year, get your tickets and help support a great cause. You hear that, everybody? You got two more chances, it sounds like. Two more, and then that's it. To see the man himself, to get your photo with him in costume. That's that's a pretty awesome opportunity, and yeah, I'm sure that's that's going to raise a ton of money for the charity, and yeah, it does. I mean, that is scary, as, as I've seen you say on social media. That's true horror there. Like we we like that our our pure evil horror, and we like to, but yeah, that's like that's that's yeah. no joke. You know, at, at every convention, I talk to people about it just to spread awareness of it and and let them know that we have this graphic novel coming that's taking on this issue. And I've talked to so many people that it has affected their lives mm-hmm. personally. You know, it, it's uh, a couple of conventions ago, a gentleman told me that his niece was uh, drugged in a bar. They were trying to take him out the back door, take her out the back door. Luckily, a bouncer noticed it and stopped the two guys. And uh, with the police tracing back their steps, found three other women handcuffed in a hotel getting ready to be trafficked so it is a very serious situation that people don't realize you know and when we were doing research for the for the book you know Christopher Mm -hmm. Priest myself and and Renee Gearlings my wife who was editing the book and dealing with it all did a bunch of powwow meetings and and you know we were saying well Christopher what about something like this and he goes oh that would never happen and we would just pull up articles and he's like, Oh man, this is horrific stuff. Yeah. And it is, it, it truly, truly, truly is, you know? So hopefully with uh, doing the last part in red tape, it will raise some awareness for it. And we're doing, uh, you know, donating funds for these uh, from these photo ops. And we're also teaming with um, deliverfund.org on the crowdfunder. There's going to be some uh, tiers. Okay of the Kickstarter mm-hmm. to that will be supporting them also. And you so. said the, the Kickstarter starts uh launches in October. Yeah. It you can you can go to our uh okay. page uh uh last part the last Spartan dot uh, uh the last Spartan red tape uh I'm not sure what it is I will give you the link so you okay. can put it down yeah I'll up. put it like down there yeah and um you can get the notification signals but it goes live October 17th and there'll be early bird specials and stuff like that. So please mark it in your calendars. It sounds cool. And and you say that you, in doing the research, you were really had your eyes open to a lot of this and how bad it truly was. And um, so I'm curious, when did the um, this project start? Like, what was the genesis of you getting involved with with the the last Spartan project to begin with? Yeah, yeah. Um, a buddy of mine, uh, John Saunders, wrote the graphic, uh, wrote the novel. Okay. Probably 15 years ago, and he sent a copy to uh, myself, okay. and we read it and said, "Wow, this is something we got to get involved with and and can help elevate this to the next level." So that was like probably 10, 15 years ago. So it's we it's been a work in progress ever since so now it's finally coming to fruition which uh, is just right at the right time when there's so much talk about it and and things um going on in the news so 
and is um, like you said, you're you're working. Um, that's awesome to hear that your wife is editing it, and and then you've got yeah. artists and and writers and and like a whole team coming together. Um, it sounds like yeah, you've got awesome. a really good good team assembled. Yeah, we we she was an editor in chief at Top Cow Comic Books for oh wow over a decade. She's worked I didn't at realize. Top Cow, Radical, um, Darby Pop, a bunch of different comic book uh, companies. And so she knows her stuff and she was able to call a lot of favors to all these top, yeah. top, top tier artists and people. So I, I'm really excited. Like th there's a, some of the artwork right there. I love that it. That is by Will Conrad. I love so, it. Uh, and that piece is colored. So if people want to see some more stuff before this happens, they can go sign up for my newsletter, go to mainentertainment.com, sign up for the newsletters and you will pre-see a lot of this art and, and get information before the general public. So it's it's pretty cool. Very cool. Very cool. And um and so after the Kickstarter launch, is there do you have an idea of when um it you hope to publish and and when you you hope to bring this thing out? Yeah, the book is fully funded. The book is just okay. about complete. So okay. we were talking uh, delivery. Probably by April or May at uh, the beginning of next year. Nice. So April or May. And then after that, I'm also planning on doing a signing tour, going to some of the uh, uh, top comic book shops. So look for that. Get your copy, and I can sign it for you. Very cool. And it's going to – now, is it going to be just like a one-shot deal, or do you, do you plan to make it a, a series, an ongoing – we are we are looking at one and done with this. Okay. Um, you never know where it's going to lead. Yeah. So hopefully we get the support that we need and and we can continue on. And yeah. um, I I saw some of the art that that you kind of teased on Instagram and and it seems that I've seen a character that looks some something like maybe somebody you could play down the road or something. Is that? Something anywhere on the in the back of anybody's minds of maybe adapting it, this what started as a novel to a graphic novel to a live action something or other maybe sometime, or maybe hopefully a TV series or something. Yeah, yeah. that'd be yeah. very cool, very cool. Well, that's well when you long term plan, if we get the support from the fans, which uh, I hope we do, I would love to keep spreading the word about the human trafficking awareness and, and putting an end to this. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, yeah. I love, I love that you're doing that and raising money for, like you said, what is a very serious cause that, that you, we don't hear a whole lot about, you know, it's not one of the causes that you hear about all the time. So yeah, I think that is very important and, and a worthy cause yeah. for sure. Well, it's, it's one of those things that, you know, out of sight, out of mind, people think it doesn't yeah. affect what it does, you yeah. know, it, uh, people aren't just trafficked for sex they're trafficked for labor they're trafficked for various different reasons you know mm -hmm. and that's the thing that uh, you have to be on the lookout for stuff like that all the time so you know and then, and another main reason why i knew i had to do something about it every time you know i had this project that we were doing and every time i would go through the atlanta airport mm -hmm. there's a psa that says be on the world, be on the lookout for human trafficking. It's a big problem. Mm, and yeah. it is a big problem in every city, every state. It's not specifically to one area or to one situation. A lot of times it's family, family trafficking, family members, you know? Mm -hmm. So everybody just has to be very vigilant about it and, and help put an end to it or help stop it or help save a child or someone from such a horrific life because i mean i i can't imagine how scarred and damaged these people are that have had this happen to them it's just yeah. horrific i think if it, yeah. you know if it was one of my family members i'd put the mask back on and get the knife and want to take care of some business you know what i mean yeah, yeah. So, i hear you yeah i think yeah I can't imagine, like you say, I just, I just can't imagine. And and like you say, it, until it happens to you or somebody you love, it's, it's, it's hard to even imagine. But yeah, it's 
Um, so yeah, I think that's great that you're raising awareness and doing that and, uh, and, yeah. and doing it in what sounds like is going to be a cool kind of entertaining way with, with this, um, graphic novel and the, and the shows that you cited in describing it, you know, that that's kind of a cool, you know, you're citing some cool stuff, some cool material. So I can kind of envision that maybe being some kind of a series or something down the road. Yeah. I, I mean, cause it's a forever going topic that you can always find oh, yeah. storylines to deal with you know but it's like and it's 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 becoming more prevalent too with the age of the internet you know and and yeah. parents make sure you know what your kids are up to especially the younger ones because they might be thinking they're talking to someone in a chat and it's somebody actually trying to groom them to take them away from you so yeah make, it happens make sure you watch over your kids Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Or Michael Myers is going to come for you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, so, so fans and, and yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll put your, uh, your contact stuff here and in the article as well. But, um, and of course the, I'm sure they all, everybody watching already follows you on Instagram, I'm sure too. And you'll be providing updates on all that stuff as it, as it goes along, I imagine. Yeah, yeah, we you know we're going to be doing updates on on uh, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, all of them. Uh, I've started a broadcast channel on Instagram, so follow along with that, and uh, please check it all out and please support if you can. And if you can't, please spread the word. I would greatly appreciate it. And I just signed up for the newsletter too, right before we we started talking today. So I'm I'm looking forward to to getting my newsletter from Tyler Maine. You guys should too. <laughs> Wait, thank you for that. I appreciate well, man, the support, brother. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Like I said, we've we've met numerous times. We've talked, we've been at different places over the years. Um and 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 we've talked about doing this for a while, so I'm glad that we finally have done it and it will not be the last time. We'll we'll do it again and, and we'll talk some more and um maybe a little bit closer to to when the the last spartan is releasing and we can kind of yeah. remind everybody what it's all about and, and dig a little deeper um when that's happening but before then like i said we're gonna see you in a couple weeks as we're recording this we're, we're it's about two weeks away from the big 45 years of terror halloween franchise reunion it's going to be another like you talked about in 2018 i think this is going to be even bigger um because we were there in 2018 and it was mind-blowing and so far this feels like it's going to be even bigger which is hard to even imagine but um it's just so unique when we think about it because other than like star wars i don't know of like another franchise and definitely not another one in the horror genre that does this where it's yeah. just every five years everybody from not just the country but around the world i mean i'm, I'm seeing people on social media saying oh i'm flying in from new zealand and i'm coming in from here and yeah it's an exciting time it definitely is. It definitely is. So so don't miss your second to last time to get a nice. photo op of Tyler with Tyler in the Michael costume. And then you're so once they get the photo op, you said then they're are they automatically registered for the raffle they, at that point or they are automatically in the, the drawing and we will we will be picking a random person and like yeah. I say, a portion of the proceeds is going to go to deliverfund.org. So thank you for supporting and thank you for helping out. Well, thank you so much again for, for just hanging out and talking to us. All of this sounds very exciting. Um, are, are, do you have any film upcoming projects you could tell us about? Are we going to see you on screen uh, anytime we can look forward to? You know, there's some stuff that I filmed before the strike, but uh, who knows when that's going to come out. And yeah. Everything's kind of delayed and put on hold, but because uh, we got to make sure we get our contract taken care of. So, yeah. you know. But I, it I is guess, what yeah, and, and that is unfortunate. We hope they get it worked out, you know, sooner than later, of course. Um, but I guess the good news is we got something new to look forward to down the line eventually. You said you yeah, shot well, something you know, before. While, while you can't get any new films and, and stuff like that, you can get a graphic novel by me, Tyler Maine, written by Christopher Priest and art by a lot of top comic book artists. There you go. There you go. Awesome. Awesome. Sounds great. Well, like I said, 
we're going to see you in a few weeks out at 45 yeah. Years of Terror. And again, Tyler, man, this has been awesome. Just getting more of your story and, and your perspective and, and just where you're at with, with what you're doing right now with this whole project. It all sounds great. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much for having me, brother. I appreciate it. I will see you at the 45. Peace. Thank you, everybody, for your support. It's time to jump off of here. And happy Halloween. And happy Halloween.